tech expert Mohit Rajans is with us now to break things down a bit more. Mohit, how wide ranging are these tech layoffs that we've seen in 2023 so far? Kelly, it's quite surprising when you look at the numbers, considering the fact that in the height of the original tech shift that we saw from March 2020 right to December 2020, we saw about 70,000 jobs lost. And we've already seen that amount lost in the first month of 2023. So here we are looking at some of the bigger indicators between Google and Microsoft and, of course, Hootsuite recently that have, have put out numbers that have indicated that not only are they planning on laying off people, but there are more to come. And there's is a clear indication that there's companies that have some product market fits. There are some companies that just need to shift their priorities, but it's definitely not going to slow down this year. What would you say are some of the contributing factors? Well, Kelly, I think there's quite a few different things that are happening. On one hand, we're seeing the fact that Google is starting to see what the effects of AI is going to have on how their business is being run. So don't be surprised if we start to see a little bit more technology use of AI within Google products moving forward and possibly displacing some of the current products that they have now. When we look at some of the other things that are happening, don't forget that many of these companies rely on consumer demand. And so when the economy is starting to flourish, to, to falter a little bit, there's going to be less Xboxes purchased, or there's going to be less demands for games as well. So I think there's a lot of anticipation happening with the way technology is going to be disrupted this year, and the way that technology companies are already starting to battle it is by mitigating it from a workforce perspective. Apple is one of the only companies to not make any layoffs so far, but is it just a matter of time? I think we're in a situation where all companies that we're talking about now and the ones that we're not even mentioning are going to see some sort of labor disruption and effect of the way that technology is changing things right now. Apple isn't immune to it, but Apple also has a lot of healthy things that they can lean on. Kelly, let's not forget that many of these companies launch products and they fold. They start up big ideas and they just go away. We've used products in our daily lives where we thought to ourselves, no one's going to use this. And so a lot of the shift that we're seeing is based on how we're starting to mature. And I think Apple anticipates that consumer demand is going to be a little bit different moving forward, but they have so many different products that they can lean on. Can you describe what some other ripple effects will be here in Canada? Well, Kelly, that's the unfortunate part about this. The numbers don't lie. And many people forget that while Google might say, yes, this is a percentage of their workforce, and Microsoft might say this is a percentage of their workforce, if there's no products for people to work on, then other agencies don't have work. And then other corporations don't have work. People aren't servicing these things. People aren't learning about these ecosystems. So I think the ripple effect that we'll start to see is, you know, some of the consulting companies in Canada are already starting to make adjustments because they don't have Microsoft and Google as an account or as a priority for their clients. So it'll be interesting to continue to follow and see what the fallout is from some of this labor market disruption. You can read more of Mohit's insights at thinkstart.ca. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure, Kelly. Have a great one.